Hey everybody, it's Rascal, and welcome to the Basement Arcade. I decided this week to try something of an experiment. I've got multiple docks for the Steam Deck. Um, one that I recently reviewed that has uh, support for multiple outputs. Uh, one on DisplayPort, one in HDMI. So I thought to myself, okay, can this be used as an OTG pinball machine? So I went ahead and for convenience sake used my At Games ALP Micro and uh, hooked it up. Uh, of course, the ALP Micro has the, we call VIBS board. That's the uh, video switching board. So I can go ahead and get a output into both the play field and the back box. What's really good though is the size of the ALP Micro and the um, the or sorry the um, Steam Deck. When it's sitting on top, it actually kind of looks right. You'll see that here uh, as I go do some walk arounds and some configuration. But without further ado, here's me setting up a Steam Deck with an ALP Micro and um, using Pinball FX for a three screen experience. Enjoy. So here's a quick flyover of the three screen experience. You saw the play field, that is the DMD, and this is the back glass for Crypt of the Necrodancer. This is all on Pinball FX. So you can see we've got a pretty good setup here. And now let's see how we got there. Okay, so let's take a look at here. Here's the ALP Micro. I'm using the JSOX 7-in-1 dock with my Steam Deck. And that's because it can actually do two outputs at the same time. So here we've plugged in with power. And I've got the DisplayPort connection using an adapter to an HDMI cable. Then I've got another HDMI cable and USB. And for ease of use, I've got a uh, dongle for a mouse. All of that is coming into here. So that's where the back glass is going to be fed. Down here is the play field. And then I've got the USB coming in to make use of the D-pad and buttons. And that just plugs into the dock. You may have to restart once or twice to get everything recognized. Once you do, get your Steam Deck into desktop mode, because that's the only way that you can get multiple monitors. And then we're going to want to copy over the back class images. So I got these from uh, Nailbuster. And just like on a PC, it uses the same folder structure. So I have installed my uh, Pinball FX onto my SD card. So I went to the SD card under Steam Apps, go over here to Common, and then find the game itself. Let me scroll down here, give me a second. There's Pinball FX. And we go into Pinball FX again. Mods. And then Cabinet. As you can see, I've already copied over all of the back glass images into this directory. And that's going to be needed to do the, the back glass third screen or second screen, depending on how you set it up. Okay, let's close that out. Okay, we're going to want to launch Steam here from the desktop mode. The best way to handle this stuff is in big picture. Looks just like a Steam Deck when you do that. Okay, so like I said, it looks just like the Steam Deck, uh, you know, gaming OS, but we're here in desktop mode. And I want to get into the main Steam menu, into settings. We're going to go to controller. We want to make sure it's not selected on Steam Deck, but on whatever that's called. That may have been one that it auto found or maybe from my old ALP configuration. I don't know. But we're going to go here and uh, work on this. Now, I've already set it up. So you may want to reset the device inputs and start from scratch. I'm going to kind of go back and forth here. Here's the buttons that I've mapped on the bottom. 
That's going to be A. I'll press it. There you go. Now I'm going to go ahead and take the rewind button and make that B, since we usually use that to go backwards in things. I'm going to map the home button to the menu button. And then the front nudge, I went ahead and mapped to the Y button. That's going to be to do our views later. So now our flipper and our nudge buttons, I've mapped them to the left bumper and then left trigger, respectively. And then you'll want to do the same for the right side. All right, now we're out of that. We have one more step to go ahead and do the nudges. So in desktop layout, we want to hit edit. And then edit the layout. If for some reason that is not showing available, you may have to go ahead and, and uh, change it from read only to uh, read write. So we want to go ahead, it's not the D-pad we want to move, it's the triggers. We said we set up the triggers for nudges. So what I want to do is, and I've already done it here, change my right trigger, or my right nudge button, to swing the joystick left. So there we go, click on left. And I'll do the same thing uh, for my left trigger. I want that to take the left stick and go right. And we'll see where that comes into play later. Okay, so now we're all set up for our nudges. I've launched Pinball FX from the main menu. I'm going to go ahead and splice this video a little bit so you don't have to watch the whole loading sequence. Here comes the Zen Studios logo and Pinball FX and Splice. Okay, we're in Pinball FX. And I'm going to go ahead and use the flipper buttons to navigate the main menu. I will use the home button to bring up the options menu. D-pad to navigate. Let's go to settings. And I use the start button as my select button. Okay, we're gonna go over to the video settings by using the right flipper. You see I've got borderless windows set up. 270 degree orientation. 1920 by 1080 for the resolution. And we've got to use low quality here. You're not going to get any decent gameplay on higher quality on the more advanced tables. All right, looking at the advanced setting, everything is fine there. Going to gameplay, I recommend turning off ball trails. That'll go ahead and get you a little bit extra oomph. All right, next thing we want to do is back out using the, the reverse button, rewind button, and go into cabinet support. Okay, we got two to set up here, so use my right flipper, make sure dot matrix window is enabled, and use 1920 and 1080 as your window size, and your position will be 3200 and zero. This will be based on how we set up our monitors to look in the desktop. And I believe I'll be showing that in a little bit here. Okay, so those are our values. Let's get out of there. Let's pick a table that's got a good back glass and good DMD. Crypt of the Necro Dancer's got a pretty nice setup there.
hope this music doesn't get me a takedown for a copyright infringement. All right. So apparently I had already started this game before. It just jumped right in and continued. Turn our volume a little bit on there. So to launch the ball, I use let's only the A button or it's the start button here. And then the flipper buttons. There's a little right flipper action. And let me see. I was going to show you nudges, but I think the game just ended. So let me go ahead and start another one really quick here. Yeah, there we go. So you press start or A to play again. I am ready. Here we go. Zone one. You gotta press and hold, release, and there you go. Flippers and nudges, all working fine. Really hard to film with one hand and uh, play with the other. But there you can see the DMD and back glass. And just go ahead, now if I wanna change the view, that's why I set up that button to be Y. So your front nudge is Y, and we'll go ahead and change the views to whatever you like best. I prefer view one. And you're done playing, just go ahead and press the home button, bring up the pause menu. I can go ahead and just exit the table, press A there, and yes. So I've been able to do the majority of all of our functions with the buttons that are built onto the ALP Micro. So I'm gonna go ahead and just choose exit game here. There's one thing I forgot to show you earlier, and that's configuring the display settings. You want to make sure you line up your monitors accordingly to match up with the numbers I gave you earlier for the back glass and the um, DMD. So I've got three monitors there. If I hit identify, you'll see which ones they are. So that Toshiba America should be my play field. Let me go ahead and get that mouse up here. And identify. All right, so that is the Toshiba America. The Lontium is on the back box. And this would be the Valve screen. All right, guys. So that is three screens, Pinball FX, uh, on a virtual pinball machine. So I hope you guys, you know, found this at least entertaining uh, and maybe informative. I've had some people ask me questions on how I had this set up. So that's why I did the deeper dive here, showing some of the configurations, the necessary hardware, and things like that. Again, what you're gonna need at a minimum, a Steam Deck, uh, a dock that supports two outputs simultaneously, such as the JSOX HB0702, otherwise known as their 701 dock. All the necessary cables, uh, I recommend using a display port to HDMI adapter um, so you can get you know that second connection out into your um, virtual pinball. And in this case, we used an ALP micro from um, At Games, and then we installed the VIBS board, the video switching board. So three screens, uh, you know, pinball FX, possible through a Steam Deck, not the highest quality, but it is playable. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment. Uh, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. And uh, if this is the kind of content you want to you know, see more of, go ahead and subscribe. Hit that bell for notifications, and you'll be alerted when I have a new video. So thanks for hanging in the uh, basement arcade with me. Y'all have a great day.